Welcome, this is the part two of the rotational kinematics. We're going to start with angular acceleration. Angular acceleration in the line world can be defined by change in velocity over the change in time. The unit is meter per second squared. Acceleration can be seen as velocity over the change in time. The corresponding circle world rotation for acceleration is going to be called alpha. It looks like the same symbol as the acceleration, like the A, but there's an extra squish here. Okay? So this is called alpha. I call it Jesus fish. So the alpha is going to be change in the angular velocity over the change in angular velocity, which is omega, divided by the change in time. The units are going to be rads per second squared. Notice it is equivalent to the line world. How does that look visually? It looks like this. It demonstrates how fast the angular velocity is changing. Okay. That is the description of angular acceleration. Another way you can actually see this is connecting um, this together. We see this as the angular, um, the centripetal acceleration, AC. So you might see it like this. If the angular velocity of a rotating object right here, this is the angular velocity tangential, okay? V1 and V2. Notice those will always change as it moves around the circle. As a result, there is an angular acceleration that points towards points towards the center okay that is called the centripetal acceleration and this is defined so it's not really angular acceleration you could call it acceleration centripetal that would be a better word for it okay it is the acceleration that points towards the center of the circle that's going to be defined by v squared over r or r omega squared. This is the acceleration that points towards the center of the circle. So there are two types of accelerations that can occur. There is an acceleration that points towards the center as well as there's going to be an acceleration alpha that arises if, the, if there is a change in angular velocity. One thing that you should notice in this example, that as you move away from the center, notice that the radius increases. Because the radiuses increase, there is also going to be a change in the centripetal acceleration. But there is no change. So here in the angular acceleration so when this happens alpha is constant throughout the circle okay because it only depends on the change in angular velocity over the change in time so we will say here that as a wheel rotates in uniform clockwise motion um, there are two points on the wheel. One has a smaller distance radius and RB has a longer distance away from there. Because they have the same angular uh, velocity, because they travel through the same points, uh, but they have different linear velocities, they travel at different distances. So you can actually say since V equals to RW, which we saw that from the previous slides, uh, you can say that the um, acceleration here are also going to be different as well and they're different based on their centripetal acceleration okay the angular acceleration remains constant let's look at an example problem here to give you better understanding of this idea so a vinyl record starts to spin and is recorded on this graph. The needle traces out a circular path and records the spin. The radius is two meters. Determine the angular acceleration of the needle for the first two seconds. So you want to find the 
acceleration. We know that the acceleration is going to be defined as the slope of the angular speed versus time. Graph will give you the angular acceleration. So omega, the change in omega is going to be the change over change of time is going to be the angular acceleration. So alpha is equal to the change in omega divided by the change in time. So how is the angular speed changing? Well, this here is the change in omega, okay? And this, again, it's speed, but you could treat it as velocity if you take the um, direction. And this is gonna be the change in time, okay? Basically, we're finding the slope. This equals to 10 rads per second because that's basically the slope of this graph. So that's a typical problem when it comes to looking at the angular acceleration, right? Here you might see something like this. So this, there is an axis um, and this is a pulley. There's a mass attached to it and it's going, the mass is going to drop, okay? Consider the clockwise uh, motion right here to be positive, right? And frictionless effects, the axis are ignored and the string wraps around the disc, never fully unwinds, graph the motion of the pulley as it goes down. Notice it's gonna go down here by the force of gravity on the block, which is gonna be equal to mg, okay? All right, so the angular acceleration here, what is going to be the, single, the change in angular acceleration? Well, the angular acceleration here is going to be constant. So it's gonna be constant here. Let's say, I'm just gonna make up a number here. So right here, okay. Right, the reason why it's constant is because the it's being, uh, the object here will experience the same angular acceleration due to the mass pulling it down, All right? So this is, there's a force here, okay? If this makes sense to you in terms of torque, think about that, it's still constant. So what is the angular uh, velocity at this point? Well, depending on this value, it's this is gonna be a linear graph. So this is linear, okay? This is to the power x, this is constant. So this is going to be a constant c. And, right, because you're just gonna go backwards, you take the area, you go backwards here, you take the area. This is gonna be a quadratic, and this is gonna be an x squared term. Right. Again, the values here are off, so but I'm just gonna graph it. There you go. Looks something like that. All right. So the angular displacement changes like a quadratic. The angular velocity is linear. Therefore, the angular acceleration is constant. Okay. Understand? You go backwards using area. If you want to go forwards, you take the slope. All right. Or if you take in calculus, the derivative. Now, we're gonna rank this, this centripetal acceleration and the velocity here. So here, four Indy cars are making a turn around a circular path. They all enter the term, turn at the same speed. You're gonna rank the car based on who has the largest angular velocity. And then two, you're gonna graph the angular velocity over time. So here's the answer, okay? They all have the same angular velocity. Why do they all have the same angular velocity? Because at all points in a rigid object rotating with the same angular speed, since every position of the object moves through the same angle in the same time, they will have the same angular velocity. Because angular velocity, in short, is defined by the change in angular displacement over change of time. This was the same right? They rotate every position in this moves through the same angle at the same time interval. So this is the same for all of them. So they're covering the same distance here, right? So the angular speed are basically the same. The red slope looks like that. The purple, the green car, and the orange car, they all have the same angular speed. What is actually changing is three. You're gonna rank the cars based on their largest tangential velocity now. 
This is tangential velocity, right? And then you're going to graph the tangential velocity, right? So tangential velocity is V is equal to radius times angular velocity. Notice that every that since the angular velocity is the same for every single point as it rotates, the linear velocity V is greater as you move away from the center because R increase. So the answer would be the red velocity, the red tangential velocity is greater than the purple's angular tangential velocity, which is greater than the green's tangential velocity, which is greater than the orange tangential velocity. So here's the graph. All right, the red is the fastest, then the purple, then the green, then the orange. So I want to make sure you guys see the difference. They all have the same angular speed or angular velocity, but they have a different tangential velocity. Okay. All right. Now we're going to talk about circular motion. This is just a ways for you to describe um, circular objects in the circular motion. This is a little review. So frequency it describes how many revolutions per second. Typically one hertz is one revolution per one second. The period is the time unit. And this is um, the amount of seconds it takes to complete one revolution, normally two pi. So we would say that the period has an inverse relationship to the frequency. So T equals to one over F, or you can say F is equal to one over T. But we know that the frequency is omega, which is the angular velocity over 2 pi. So a typical problem is that what is the angular velocity of an ultra low frequency radio wave of 300 hertz? All right? Please understand that 1 hertz is 1 revolution per second. That equals the frequency. 300 hertz, in this case, is 300 revolutions per second. Now, you take the frequency, which is equal to angular velocity over 2 pi, and you want to solve for angular velocity. So you plug in what you know for the frequency, 300. Multiply that by 2 pi, you're going to get around 1,884.96. This is basically going to be the angular velocity of something that travels at 300 hertz. Okay, and again, the units for this, if you want to know, it's rad per second, All right?